Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be discussing vectors. Now what are vectors? Well vectors are a group of units of measurement that have both a magnitude and a direction. Nah, no, 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 not those kind of vectors. Uh, these vectors are actually very similar to arrays and they're used in pretty much the same fashion. So at the end of this tutorial I'm actually going to explain uh, in my personal opinion when when to consider using a vector and when to consider using an array but there are no rules set in stone so just so you know so basically vectors are pretty much the same thing you can store a group of information of the same data type but in order to use vectors we need to import a library which also means we're gonna have access to a bunch of predefined functions in our vector class right up here so you just include vector pretty easy so what's the format for declaring a vector? Well, basically, all you do is type out the word vector, then some hairpins right next to it with the data type inside. So I'll go data type, and then name of vector. Some some like textbooks, for example, or you know, in a college course, they'll just have you call it v or something like that, or maybe my vector. I'm gonna call it my vector. I don't like v; it's too vague. So. Okay, so let's create our first vector. So let's call it a vector, and I'll use integers, and uh, I was going to call it my vector. So uh, the sweet thing about vectors is that they resize for you automatically, depending, you know, if you add any elements to it. So right now, we don't have anything inside of our vectors, so let's figure out how to add something in. In order to add something in, just have that vector dot push, and actually, oh, not vector, my vector. You have to type out the name of your vector, then dot. And before I actually go back to the pushback, uh, as you can see, we have a whole mess of stuff that we have here. So let me find pushback. Oh, I passed it. There it is. Pushback. Click tab. And then inside the parentheses, type in the data type that you want to add in. So uh, the only data type we can use are integers. So let's add in three. Now let's figure out how do we actually go about printing this. And that will actually be very similar to arrays. So first I'll have a message printout that says vector and I'll probably want to see out and line at the very bottom and oh come on come on I did that now let's have a for loop pop out shall we so for and okay so now I want to go revisit something you remember when I was discussing many tutorials back the difference between an unsigned integer and an unsigned or excuse me an unsigned integer and a regular integer same thing with doubles unsigned doubles and doubles is that integers are they take up four bytes of memory I believe and one of those four bytes determines whether or not that number will be positive or negative however when you do that only the other three bytes are used in determining how much, how large a number it can hold. If you make an unsigned int or an unsigned double, doubles I think are eight bytes or something. I'm not sure about those. But uh, with integers, uh, if you make something uh, that data type unsigned, then basically what you're doing is you're ensuring that it will always be positive. Hence the unsigned, because there's going to be no signs in front of it, no plus or negative. It will always be positive. So. Uh, that basically leaves that fourth and extra byte in the integer, you know, with the sp the memory that's you know used to reserve that information. Uh, it's able to, you know, expand, make a larger number because it doesn't have to determine whether it's a positive or negative anymore. So it can now hold a larger number. Of course, it can only be positive. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to be using a function that's going to return the size of our vector. So we have while i is less than my vector dot size. Now size, when the, when the creators of the vector class when they were making these for C++, uh, obviously when you have a size for something, it's never going to be negative, right? Even if our vector is empty, it still returns zero, which isn't negative. So they decided to have it return an integer that was unsigned. And even though you don't get an error by doing this. You don't you don't get an error by you know keeping that out. You will during runtime. So make sure that this int i equals zero is unsigned. So that right here in the expression in the comparison, 
this i will be an unsigned int and this is an unsigned int because an unsigned int and an int are recognized as different variables it's like trying to compare an integer to a double or an integer to a boolean i don't know it's it just won't work so i plus whoops i plus plus and there we go so let's actually print this so c out and there's two different ways you can go about doing this type out my vector and type in dot at and put in i or just like arrays you can just do it this way which is how I'll do it for you know continuity and uh, there we go I think that's all I wanted to do so now let's run this so there you go it says vector and three so three was the only one in there so our dot size and all that worked so that's really really cool so should we add some more in I think so so I have to copy paste paste four five there you go so this would be like I don't know uh, a seven a four a twelve and a nine how about that so I click save and let's run this again so three seven four twelve nine three seven four twelve nine okay so everything worked so that's really really cool so uh, in this tutorial, I don't think I'm going to show you how to fill up a vector. I think I'll say that for the next tutorial when I show you how to pass vectors as parameters. I think both these tutorials will be much shorter and much easier than the, the arrays, especially the last one, multi-dimensional arrays. Oh my goodness. That was a, that was a real uh, surprise. I need to stop saying uh. I'm, I'm so sorry about that. Let me try to stop saying uh for five seconds. Okay, so now I want to show you some more functions that you can use for vectors, and that'll pretty much be it for this tutorial. So allow me to put out the ones I've already shown you. So I'll just talk about my vector as a vague vector name. It's whatever you called it. So first I showed you dot push back, and some sort of a value went inside. And basically, basically all that does is adds an element to the end of the vector also resizes it. Bear that in mind because obviously the size changes for each pushback so take, keep that in mind. And the next one I showed you was my vector dot at and what that will do is return element at specified index number so allow me to actually, you know, type the word index in there. So you just put an index number in there, and that's pretty much it with that. So I showed you those two pushback. Oh, size. So my vector dot size, and okay, so returns an unsigned int equal to the number of elements. Did I spell that all right? I hope I did. Okay, I think that looks all good. So bear that in mind. It returns an unsigned int. So that's all I've shown you for, uh, so far. So now I'm going to show you actually two at the same time. So the, the next ones I'll be showing you is erase, begin, insert, clear, empty. Oh, quite a few. So I'm going to be showing you the insert and the begin first. So uh, so we're going to insert something in here. So let's let's actually have it print first, and then we'll modify it so we can see the original and then we can see how it changes over time. So I would talk about my vector dot and what I want to do, oh yeah, insert. So there it is. And then in order to insert something, let's actually look at the syntax. So I'll type out again my vector dot and then insert. And then what you have to do inside of this is type out my vector dot begin and then adds and then this is optional add some sort of integer it is it, it, you don't have to add anything at all but I'll explain it then the uh, new value whatever you want to put in there for the second parameter and allow me to go back up here and add in the dot begin so my vector dot begin reads vector from first elements, otherwise known as index uh, index zero, basically. So it's, it's going to start at the very beginning. So and you have to use the my vector dot begin inside the insert. So we'll go down here, and let's say, oh yeah, one more thing. 
I didn't actually put in the definition. Adds elements before specified index number. There we go. So that's really important before it. So let's go down here and type out, let's say, uh, my vector again. Dot begin. And so that will, so just typing in like this, it'll start at the very beginning. So if I just did something like this, then that's just going to add something to the very beginning. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it down here and I'll actually want to copy this as well. Copy, paste, I'll click save and let's run this. So notice how right here the second time vector was printed, the 5 is at the very beginning. But we can also go forward. So we could go my vector dot begin plus three and let me throw out a an end line here so I click save and run this so if you look at this to see where the five was placed what it did was go my vector dot begin and add three so it started at the beginning of the vector and then it went forward three one two three to the twelve but added the five before the twelve as you can see here the five is right before the twelve so that's how that works then the next one I'd like to show you is the, what was it called, remove? Oh no, erase. My vector dot erase. And basically all you do is type out my vector dot begin and then add again whatever you want optional. So, uh, removes elements before specified index no 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 it's not gonna be before it's gonna remove elements at specified index number what am I talking about that'd be ridiculous if it went one before it so yeah it's just one integer that would go in there basically so let's go down here and go my vector dot and let's I keep wanting to say erase okay erase is the right one and I'll type in my vector dot begin and where should we erase from let's erase the 12 so we start at the beginning then add one two three so we have to add three is that correct no because we added the five right there so technically that's going to get rid of the five because the five is going to be right in between the four and the twelve so we have to add one more to that so that's oh plus one two three four there we go so let's add four four of that actually then that should get rid of that 12 for us so let's copy all this right here that's why we use functions so we don't have to copy and paste all this again and again but I don't want to show you the functions yet I'll run this and there we go now the 12 was uh, ridden of I guess then the, la the last two I want to show you are two I'll show you at the same time that's my vector dot and that will be clear uh, removes all elements in vector and then I want to show you my vector dot uh, empty and what that does is returns boolean value if whether vector is empty basically meaning it's been cleared so, meaning there's no elements in there. So I want to call the empty first so you can see it return false. So, uh, let's see here. So what I'm going to do is go my vector. So I'm actually going to go C out. Since this is going to be returning something, I'm just going to go C out. And let me make an if statement actually. I'm going to use that instead. I'm going to go if. So if my vector uh, dot empty. So basically, if it's empty, then C out and line will have it say is empty, like that. And then we'll make an else that will say C out. Uh, oh, no semicolon there and line 
is not empty. Because remember, this is returning a Boolean value. My vector dot empty, all that does is return a Boolean value. So, so it's going to say if, and then this is going to return true or false. Uh, if it returns true, it'll say is empty. If it's not, is not empty. So I'll click save and run this. Is not empty. So that worked. Then the next one I want to show you is the clear. So now I'll go down here, type out my vector dot clear as such. Now that doesn't actually print anything. All that does is clearing it. So allow me to copy this right here so you can see the this little if statement right here change. So now we're going to clear it and now below it it'll say uh, is empty. So I'll click save and run this. And there we go. Now it says is empty because we cleared it. So that's all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. Uh, nothing too much. This is a long video but it wasn't really much was it? So I'll keep all these functions here for you to look at. There, there's others you could look up on the internet but these are pretty much the ones that you'll use. Uh, so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I'll see you next time.